Friends, this will be completely hands-on session. Of course, there'll be a lot of hands-on that we'll be doing, but majorly we will ensure that it's a, basically hands-on session as opposed to theory. Of course, there will be theory. Theory is something which we cannot avoid. So I request you all to keep your um, credit card handy because when you create the account, you have to give your credit card details. Nevertheless, we'll be using the free tier plan, free tier plan, but still you need to have your credit card that you need to provide. And if you guys are trying to connect using mobile, you'll be in for deep trouble. Yeah. So friends, this course is not the mainstream program. We have something called as ML on cloud. This is not the mainstream ML on cloud training by any means. Okay. This is just to help you all get up to speed, try to understand you know, on how certain functionalities of cloud are used, basically to deploy your model in production. Okay, so having said this, what is your question, Piyush? You might want to unmute and ask your question. Oh, hi, sir. So uh, ML on cloud uh, here, uh, we will cover full course or like how much we will cover. Okay, I'll answer that question. So which no. course are you from? The data science. Certificate program or professional yeah. program? Certificate. Okay, and who was your trainer? Uh, sir, uh, um, Sarat, sir. Okay, fine. So, all right, I think Sharad has not informed you that instead of hypothesis testing, we have included. Okay, Piyush. Oh. So hypothesis testing is for roughly four hours. So that four hours, we thought we'll replace it with ML on cloud. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. So let me tell you all that we have a specific program called as ML on cloud which is for 24 hours. Okay, ML on cloud is for 24 hours. And in that, since AWS has more than 50% market share, we focus majorly on AWS SageMaker. And we spend time on Azure, Microsoft Azure, and we ensure that all these trainings are aligned with the certifications. So you can also take certifications. If you attend ML on cloud, which is for 24 hours. And we also cover GCP, Google Cloud Platform, and IBM Watson. When is the next batch going to be? We will notify you guys. But this training is not complete ML on cloud. This training will be for four hours. Two hours of that would be conducted today and we would be majorly spending time on AWS SageMaker. And another two hours would be on Microsoft Azure. Why did we do this? We have moved hypothesis testing to e-learning version. And then we have brought in this into picture, these two, as live instructor-led training. Why did we do that? Because a lot of job descriptions are expecting you to be aware of certain cloud functionalities. And people who are doing live projects, they're actually asking us question on how do I deploy the model in production? Okay, how do I actually deploy the model in production? That's a question which people are asking. 
Okay, so let me tell you that traditionally, a typical data scientist, what do they do? They collect the data. They understand the business problem, of course. They collect the data. They prepare the data. Okay, after data preparation, they build the model. And after building the model, they deploy the model. Or rather, let me erase this. Let me say that. They will evaluate the model. Model accuracy, so on and so forth. Here, role of a data scientist ends. Data scientist. scope ends here and then what happens is role of a software engineer kicks in this specific software engineer or your IT department, or you'll have your full stack web developers, full stack web developers. Their role will kick in. And what is it that they do? They will try to deploy a model in production. When I say deploy the model in production, It can be a mobile application or a web application or some kind of pipeline building. It's called as data pipeline building. Okay, using certain APIs application programming interfaces. Okay, application programming interfaces. Yeah, guys, are you able to hear me? I want you all to respond on the chat window. You are able to hear me. Fine. Thank you, thank you, thank you for confirming, friends. Because one of a friend was saying that my voice was breaking. So, okay. Data pipeline building is done using application programming interfaces. It can be a Java based API, a REST API, or a paid API, whatever be it. Using some JavaScript, some programming, they get this job done. When it comes to your model deployment also, software engineers or your IT department people or full stack web developers do the same thing. They build this pipeline or they just take your code and deploy it in their applications or whatever application the client has. Is this part clear about model deployment? A lot of people ask me question, who does model deployment? Yeah, should you do? No. You are a data scientist. You cannot possibly build mobile applications, web applications. You cannot be a Superman, He-Man, you know, Iron Man, Hulk at the same time. Your scope is limited. You do whatever is your job. Okay, that's it. And this part model deployment is taken care of by another department. Now, what is happening with respect to cloud? Okay, one more thing I forgot here is after deploying your model, 
you also need to monitor your model. Model monitoring. And model updation or model upgradation. You update your model or upgrade your model. These are the various things that are involved. Now, who does mo model monitoring or model upgradation? Should your typical data scientist do that? But you are paying the data scientist huge salary. You want the guy to work on new projects. So typically what happens is the junior folks who join companies are given the role of model monitoring and model upgradation, junior data scientists. or data analysts who want to eventually transition into becoming data scientists. Okay, and here, this data pipeline building activity is usually done by data engineers. They are also responsible for model deployment. And data scientists, you know what they do. You know what a software engineer does. And this model monitoring and upgradation, usually it is done by junior folks. And this work of working on new projects is done by senior data scientists under the guidance of Chief data scientist. Okay, this is how typically an organization structure is. And data analyst is a person who does reporting and work works on the data to generate Uh, insights on past and present. What happened in the past? What is happening now? That's the role of a data analyst. What do they use? They typically use Tableau or Power BI or Excel or Click, something on those lines to get the job done. But as a data scientist, you work on future. What will happen next? Working on future is data scientist role. Working on the past and present is data analyst role. Usually these kind of data analysts who might be planning to transition into data science role would be put into this junior tasks of monitoring the model, upgrading the model, etc. And then anyways, you know what a data engineer does. These are the typical doubts which people have. What is, what do you mean by data analyst? What do you mean by data scientist? These are typical kind of questions which people have usually. Okay. So then, There is something else which is fast picking up, catching the attention of the world, which is MLOps. Machine learning operations. The beauty with machine learning operations is that it helps you automate the end-to-end -end pipeline, this entire thing right from data collection until data preparation to model building, to evaluating the model, to deployment, to monitoring, to model upgradation. This entire pipeline can be automated. Not can be, is being automated using MLOps. And 
um, th that's one of the visualization tools similar to Tableau or something. Yeah. Let's not lose focus on the prime discussion, please, friends. Okay. MLOps has two things. Either you can do a cloud implementation or on-premise implementation. When it comes to cloud, you can say that I'll use AWS or I'll use Microsoft Azure or I'll use Google Cloud Platform or I'll use Oracle or I'll use Ali Cloud, something on those lines. The moment you go to cloud, you will be confined to one of these service providers. If you do not want to confine yourself to one of these service providers, then what do I do? I want to be service provider agnostic in terms of automating the end-to-end -end pipeline. That's done using MLflow, Kubeflow, the tools that are currently popular, TensorFlow Extended, Apache Airflow, so on and so forth. And there are a bunch of other things which exist. And our program on ML Ops, which is for 40 hours, focuses on these. And we thought a lot and uh, we understood that some amount of cloud training, machine learning on cloud, some amount of DevOps training, and machine learning primer, just, just to brush up your skills, is something that we would do. But we are expecting people who are already data scientists to enroll for the, this particular program, MLOps or someone who is already into DevOps. Okay. For them, it would be very helpful. Okay. Now, our focus would be on cloud. We will see how to end-to-end -end automate, at least until model monitoring. Okay. Why, is, why are these two things important? You know, friends, when you work on live project and when you put it on your resume, you have to clearly I mean, you should be able to demonstrate this entire pipeline. Why is model monitoring important? Because say you built a project, you, you have done a project, you deployed that and customer is using this. And when you build the model, it so happened that accuracy of the model was say 90%. And everyone was happy smooth sail and then it was working well in production. And suddenly there was some political change. See, when I say political, you need not think about the entire country political system. Need not be in your organization also, there will be a political system. Organization, reorg. You know, people heading one department were made head of another department. What would happen then? Because of this reorg, people will try to bring in new improvements, find uh, fault finding. Someone else was heading. I want to rip this process apart and say that the previous guy who was heading wasn't doing a good job. So I'll make all those changes. I need to prove myself. And also I have to prove that another person didn't do a good job. The person who was previously handling that. So they will make changes. When such changes happen, there'll be a process change. When process change happen, the way data was being captured changes. Or maybe there, there could be some economic change. Economic change, COVID, who expected? Things changed. Do you think the models that you built before COVID would still continue working for airlines or for hotel management, so, I mean, for, for hospitality, so on and so forth? Not really. So we need to upgrade the models, right? So any kind of social change, you know, any kind of technological change, digital transformation is at its all time high. The adoption of data science, though for a brief period during COVID, it, I mean, it experienced a lull, but now it's at its all time prime. I mean, the 
the number of job openings etc are exploding like anything so all these are certain changes okay whenever these kind of changes happen your underlying data changes the accuracy that you got sure you would have told that you know what i split my data into training data set validation data set test data set i built my model using the training data i validated on the validation data i felt the model was the best and then i tested on the test data and accuracy is 90% wonderful but because of all these underlying changes certainly your accuracy will change or it might remain constant but what if your accuracy is dipping at the rate of you know probably 0.5% every month you will not be able to monitor such a drift in accuracy if you are doing a manual job who has the patience 0.5% per month means just imagine 30 divided by 0.5% how much would that be minuscule so such a drift usually humans would not even want to look into that happens or sometimes even worse even if the drift is very high you might not focus on that because your focus is on working on new models this model is done and dusted right certain in certain companies they don't even monitor the models that they deploy how is the accuracy of the model is the decision making based on the predictions still accurate or not no what is the model upgradation plan they do not they keep using the models built 2 years 3 years back okay usually these two are neglected but they are very important so when you display your project and your profile obviously you have to mention this what is your model upgradation what is the model monitoring process that was laid down so on and so forth when it comes to cloud implementation you can do all of these things simply it can be automated and the discussion that we are going to have on um, aws sagemaker would be related to auto ml on machine learning if it's machine learning on cloud of course the various other things make sense but here we'll just be looking at sagemaker studio okay today we'll be looking at amazon sagemaker studio which would help you you know to a great extent automate the process i'm not going i'm not going to get into the depth of automation that's part of ml on cloud okay but here we'll discuss about a few capabilities so when it comes to amazon sage maker people invented this way back in 2017 and every day or no i would not say every day would be an exaggeration maybe every 2 to 3 weeks when i open sage maker and when i see what's new in that there will be something or the other new some additional functionality some additional feature i'm just like wow okay and when it comes to sage maker you have something called as api application programming interfaces and that is what you need to deploy a model in production there is also there is also sdk software development kits okay of course as part of ml on cloud we discuss on that not here okay what are the main capabilities of sage maker the main capabilities of sage maker would be building the model training the model optimizing to get the best model out and then deploying your model and who manages the underlying hardware and if needed software do you need to worry about what is the server configuration what is the speed of that etc not needed do you need to 
do periodic uh, maintenance of your hardware your server restart you know all that not needed okay again i put this question to you guys is my voice yeah thank you so much uh, sagar for responding to me. okay so all this hardware software maintenance part is taken care that infrastructure is taken care by the cloud provider you focus on what you need to focus on what should you focus on building a model which solves the business problem and then deploy why are you even worried about what is underlying hardware software trust me when we have done a project for south african client post bank they wanted everything on premise there it was really very tough for us because we had to look into you know um the servers what should be the configuration how many backup servers do we need to have you know how, what kind of clustering environment do we need to set up to what extent business continuity plan should be deployed what is disaster recovery plan all that all that headache is gone the moment you move on to cloud and companies are moving very fast okay here when you want to build your model there are two ways one is you can use your notebook instance okay there is something called as ec2 elastic cloud compute ec2 instance on cloud and this is fully managed by amazon it comes pre installed with a lot of popular tools and libraries you will have jupiter you will have anaconda so on and so forth or you can use amazon sage maker studio it is a full fledged id integrated development environment which is specialized to handle ml projects okay and if you want to experiment with different algorithms you have access to or let me put it here there are 17 built in algorithms okay you have access to lot of open source frameworks such as tensorflow pytorch apache mxnet scikit-learn you name it okay you can simply bring in your code whatever code you have written take it put it there and start using it okay and you can come up with your own container container means you you put container you, what do you put in a container i mean you you put ice you put water you put what what not right in a typical container like that in this container you put your data you put your code and whatever you need you put that that's called as container you can um run your own code in your own container that also is a provision that is there but i'll not touch upon that and the best part is you have something called as aws marketplace all the service providers have aws marketplace we are not talking about that sambit okay so we have a lot of you know marketplace requirements marketplace is a place where you can go and buy you trade basically 
whatever code you have, you can actually deploy. Say you worked on a unique project. And you feel that that project, you know, you've put in a lot of hardship in terms of coming up with the code, coming up with the code modularity, so on and so forth. Once you're done with that, you take that code and all these, and then put it on the marketplace for sale. And you can typically sell this. And this code usually is something which is very optimized. Like you go to Amazon and you can purchase a lot of items on the e-commerce portal. Similar to that, in marketplace, you can buy and sell your models and frameworks. Do you know what? There are a lot of startups which have worked on a lot of products. They came up with amazing solutions. They are selling the solutions for you, readily available. So even if I have someone who has good knowledge on the concepts, not a programmer. I would just ask that person to go to any marketplace, all the cloud providers have marketplace. That person will actually search for one and buy that and deploy it and make changes to the code wherever need be and job done. And when it comes to auto ML, you have Amazon SageMaker Autopilot. This autopilot will help you perform auto ML. Once again, automatically you can build, train, optimize, and deploy a model without even writing a single line of code when it comes to autopilot. Okay. Moving back to our SageMaker, it has two key, uh, you know, features which you can make use of. One is called as SageMaker Ground Truth. What do you mean by Ground Truth? Ground Truth means annotating your data sets or labeling your data sets. or labeling. In most cases, you'll face two challenges. One is, you might be having less labeled data. You'll have data, but label will be less for probably if you have 100,000 observations, Maybe for the initial 1000 observations or 10,000 observations, you'll have the output variable. For the remaining, you do not have. So there are two ways to annotate. One is train your model on these 1000 or 10,000 observations, which have the labels, and use that model to predict the output for remaining observations. But would it be accurate? Not really. But what can you do? Given the limitations, you figure out what is the best that you can perform. What is the best that you can do? One way. Second way is, no, this is life science healthcare data. I cannot take a risk. This is semi-supervised learning. I can't, you know, train model on maybe 10,000 observations and say, let me use it to predict on the remaining observations. You cannot probably do that. So you can actually hire people on Amazon. There's Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth. You can 
assign an annotation job there are a lot of people even you and i can go and register and say that do you know what i'll do the labeling job for you though it's a low end job there is some scope of making money that's what i'm saying but very less money is what you can make and if money is very important for you you can get people for a lower cost here and job done you you have them you just need to explain them on how to label um, automatically on cloud itself you do it and they will be able to label annotate only when you say yes they have actually labeled properly then your money would be deducted or if you don't want to go with mechanical turk that is that's the name mechanical turk meaning mechanically you're giving work to a few people right in amazon it's called as mechanical turk okay if you don't want to give it to freelancers for labeling you can assign it to private companies there are private companies who do it some there are there are startups whose job is only to do annotation especially in the space of self driving cars they have good 700 800 do you remember data entry long back people were like having companies with 400 people 500 people their job is to do only data entry in that way labeling is yet another job and there are startups one of my own friends um, he was a senior project manager in infosys he came out two years back and he formed a company they are doing exceptionally well all the projects or i would say 80% of the projects are in the space of self driving cars looking at the images looking at the video splitting them into images and giving a label to each and every image their client will train them uh, train their staff and then they will label that's one thing and you also have something called as Amazon SageMaker processing. Amazon SageMaker processing. You can run your data processing and model evaluation bad jobs. Bad jobs means you know group of you know uh, functionalities of the code would be executed at one go here you can either use scikit learn or spark watch out for the space guys i am going to conduct a session on spark my our own uh, our main motive is to help you all get a job at the same time we will draw a line and say that this would be the scope you might ask us for um, you know moon but that cannot happen right whatever are being asked in interviews typically will confine our training to that while well, there is a, there are a lot of additional things you will have to explore on your own okay next train sage maker takes care of assigning the infrastructure to you the required hardware and software and it also recommends on what kind of hardware you need to train your model so you need not spend time managing your servers you don't need a server administrator or a system administrator and on top of this you will have a lot of storage capabilities managed storage you can use there is something called as s3 from amazon simple storage service that's simple storage service 3s so that's why s3 or you also have amazon efs you have amazon fsx depending on what kind of requirements you have you can use whatever data you want or whatever data source you want 
these are like folders in which you put your data and there is something called as uh, when it comes to training managed spot training this uses amazon ec2 elastic cloud compute spot instances and this can reduce the cost of training when you use cloud you need to pay money right to amazon it will reduce the cost by up to 80% up to 80% and amazon gives huge discounts if you are a you know a big player it helps you operate in distributed environment big data hadoop what does hadoop do friends hadoop if you uh, i mean if you want to store the data worth say 10 terabytes or maybe 1000 terabytes on one server you cannot so you can actually distribute this data on multiple servers and if you need say 32 gb to process the data and say you have 8 gb 8 gb throughout so what do you do you make use of you you make use of 8 gb here 8 gb 8 gb and 8 gb if you have all these four you will have 32 gb to process the data so you can process the data by making use of distributed servers multiple servers you can distribute the data on multiple servers you can make use of the processing of multiple servers and then process the data this is exactly what your uh, sage maker does or your aws in general does and uh, it autom automatically distributes large scale training jobs on a clustered environment cluster environment means what if this server crashes data is there on another server fail over if there is huge load on this server automatically you know the load will shift on to the other servers which have uh, which is being used less if you have infinitely large data set then you have something called as pipe mode it streams infinitely large data sets from s3 to a training instance instance is a computer simple you need not move the data from one place to another to train you need not copy your data set load it into python or load it into r and then process not needed it will do it then you have automatic model tuning all your hyper parameter tuning it will automatically do it for you and you will get to know what is the best model you can perform experiments i'll show you all of these things when it comes to amazon sage maker you can perform experiments what do you mean by experiments okay if it's neural network for example you might say hey i want to keep changing the number of hidden layers i want to keep changing the number of neurons and various other things i want to keep changing the batch size i want to keep changing the learning rate and then i want to experiment all these experiments would be done yeah so you can tune your hyper parameters 
Okay. Yep, activation functions also can be changed, no doubt. checking whether our friends are there or not okay then you have something called as sage maker debugger amazon sage maker debugger uh, sir i have a doubt here right. uh, yes sir. what is this automated model tuning means okay have you uh, learned about neural network no sir hmm. so i mean which class are you in currently? Oh, sir, I actually I completed the batch uh, that is 6th Jan batch, Nikhil sir's batch. Long back? Long back, yes sir. So neural network wasn't taught, is it? So it was taught, but uh, I'm Before not problem. able to recall again. Yeah, no problem. Uh, neural network has a lot of options which you can keep changing and keep experimenting for that purpose. Okay, sir. Okay, and uh, all that manually, you need not experiment. Automatically, uh, your Amazon SageMaker itself takes care of that. That's what I would say. Okay. Next is deploy. When it comes to deploying a model in production, SageMaker takes care of all your deployment infrastructure. You can deploy on real-time endpoints. We will see practically what do we mean by an endpoint. Endpoint creates an HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol API. Once you have this, you can do your predictions. Auto-scaling is also available, meaning if you want more processing speed, etc., it will automatically take care of depending on the need. And if you were to look at this website, so it will actually have HTTPS. Yeah, there you go. HTTPS. You can deploy on your website. Okay. Or you might say that you want to do a batch transform. And this uses a model to predict data in batch mode. And while all these things happen, you might want to monitor your infrastructure also. Hey, how much RAM is being consumed? How much memory is being consumed? How much uh, you know uh, space, hard disk space is being consumed, so on and so forth. So you can make use of Amazon Cloud Watch, not Mad, sorry, Watch. Cloud Watch. This helps to view. This helps you to view real-time metrics, and it can help you keep track of your infrastructure performance. And SageMaker also gives you erasing just so that I get some space to write about deployment. You have Amazon SageMaker model monitor. This captures the data which is sent to an endpoint and compares it with the baseline. You might say that, do you know what? My baseline accuracy is 90%. That means minimum it has to be so much. Benchmark, baseline. And whatever predictions real time happen, it's going to compare against the baseline. And whenever there is a drop in the accuracy, if the accuracy is less than your benchmark or baseline, it will identify and raise an alert. Or, you know, baseline could be something else also. Baseline means I'm expecting my data uh, variables to have minimum this value and max this value. 
if a new value is less than this or greater than this there is data quality issue outlier i'm not expecting any missing value in my data if there are any missing values it will raise an alarm to you data distributed uh, distribution of the data is like this one of the variable is income which has exponential distribution the new data that comes in looks maybe linear data drift these kind of things are automatically alerted right you will be alerted automatically on these kind of things see to what extent automation is happening my dear friends yeah ml on cloud i i strongly strongly recommend people to learn that i am not sure i think only some 8% of the people who completed data science training have gone ahead with ml on cloud but i'm telling you this is the need of the hour okay then you have amazon sage maker neo neo is going to compile the models for specific hardware architecture if you say i want mobile application i want to deploy this in mobile it has a different architecture right it will give you a light weight runtime environment that's the use of neo then you have something called as amazon elastic interface or i would say inference it will keep adding small amount of gpus slowly and steadily it will keep adding to your cpu computer you have a say cpu instance to your cpu instance it will be adding small amount of gpu and it will look at a mechanism to find the best cost performance ratio best cost performance ratio for prediction for prediction you don't need for training you need very high uh, you know maybe infrastructure depending on your data but for you know prediction purpose future prediction and all that you don't need a very uh, you know sophisticated or high end uh, you know uh, instances so that's taken care by amazon elastic uh, inference so these are a few things that you need to remember optimization training and optimization both put together all those other points uh, cover these things you know um, for example i told about model storage i spoke about managed spot training distributed training pipe mode automatically tuning the model and then um, sage maker experiment sage maker debugger all these things are a few things which uh, includes both training and optimization okay so now i would recommend you guys to do this during your break i'll give you 10 uh, minutes break or so during the break i want you all to open aws.amazon.com open this url please and quickly create an account i would say sign into the console i don't know which part is enabled which is not enabled for me let's see Okay, I'll quickly open my email, and while I open my email, I request you all to create your account. Please do that, friends.
and resetting the password now. And uh, uh, let me type in the details. Uh, friends, please do it. I just reset my password and uh, I'm going to give you uh, what's the time there? It should be seven now, right? IST. So I'll give you a time until 7.15 IST. I request you all to please create your account. Please create your account. You have to give your uh, you know, credit card. Don't worry, we'll be using the free service. I'll let you know if you're uh, charged inappropriately during your training, you can actually ask your support. You can drop an email to the support and they'll return the money. Okay, don't worry on that. Is there a question always for me? Sir, uh, we should create root user or a normal user, sir? Root user. Root, root user. You need to create a root user. Debit card should work, Vishwas. I think it will work. Just try out. I see, I see, debit card will work, sir. Acha, okay. Yeah, there goes the answer. It will work, it seems. It is a free tier, but for free tier also, they'll ask you to give your details. Just in case you exceed the limits of free tier, they will charge you. Right, Shabas? Now, please go ahead with that. Uh, sir, yes, Amit. Sir, I think they're asking for this uh, business plan or personal. That option personal. is given. Personal. Uh, yeah, yeah, personal. Yes.
Hare Krishna, can you unmute once? We can try out debit card also. All right, Hare Krishna. And Hare Krishna, one more suggestion to you. And maybe by mistake, you have enabled your caps. But speaking using caps is like yelling at someone, right? So I'm assuming you are aware of that. So what is the amount they charge? For test, they will charge one rupee. Again, it will be refunded back. Okay, okay. Sir, hello. Hello. Yes, Jyotsna. Sir, do they charge uh, any amount, sir, for this information? Three rupees or four rupees they charge just to validate. Okay, that's it, sir. Yeah, yeah. No problem of giving this uh, details then? No problem. Of, no, no, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Use only free service. Whatever you create, you delete. That's it. Mm, Ritesh, I'm not sure about that conclave, my dear friend. So, not really. I probably can't be of help to you on that.
sir my debit card is not supporting i think uh, means uh, it's saying only visa card uh, but i am having rupee card rupee debit card rupee won't work brother rupee they are not taking no they won't take any international purchase rupee will not accept okay okay Hi, sorry. Someone was trying to speak. I was on a call. Mm, no, no problem, Chari. You can watch the screen on what I do in that case. Yeah, Harini. I'm using standard chartered card. Amount is deducted. How much amount was deducted, Harini? Two rupees, is it? Mm. Not sure. Just try out once again. It's not that. Yeah, we are recording the session. We are recording the session. Three more minutes for everyone to complete it. Who is it? Then you'll have to just observe what I'm doing, and maybe try out some other card, Harini, at a later point. Maybe that would help. People who are not able to do it. Okay, fine. No problem. So this is a kind of console that you're seeing, right, Mani Krishna? That's fine. Another two minutes. Let's wait for our other friends to complete this, and I'll show you what we need to do. Uh, you need not purchase anything, Pascal. You just create your account. That's it. I can't comment on that, Vishwas. As long as you're doing whatever I'm create, uh, teaching you, and as long as you delete whatever you have created, you won't be charged. But if you try out anything else, um, it's at your own peril. It's free for one year only, Farhan. I didn't get your question. What do you mean by that? Are you asking me uh, that is it free for only one year or are you saying that, oh, it's free for only one year? <laughs> I mean, what's your question? Asking, okay, yeah, it's free for one year, but you, if you use only the free service, okay, you can just type in, in the interim while our friends create. Oh, is it? Okay. Sure, sure. So let me get into this. Sage Maker Free Tier. Friends, this is what you know you can use. As, as long as it's ML T3 medium instance, 250 hours can be used. ML22 instance or MLT3 instance on-demand notebooks. If you're using Studio, ensure that it's ML T3 medium only. Okay. 
and for data wrangling and for data wrangling means what data pre-processing kind of right and for feature store storing your features this is the amount of data for training you'll have 50 hours on this or this for inference means testing prediction and SageMaker Studio is available at no additional charge. Just to make use of this, they won't charge. Okay. At no additional charge, you can use all these things. SageMaker pipe, pipelines, and autopilot, debugger, experiments, model monitor, clarify, jumpstart, bunch of that. Clarify is to better explain your model, basically. And Gemstart is used to easily deploy your ML solutions for many use cases. Trust me, if you come back to the same page after maybe uh, two weeks or three weeks, you'll find a few more new services. Ground truth I explained anyways. This is for Edge. I spoke about this. Yeah, that's how it is. And they have given the pricing on how much it would cost you. Ensure that you would select the least and this is in various regions. You select various regions and proceed further. I think in Mumbai, we don't even have this, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. In Mumbai, do we have it? If we select Mumbai, it wasn't coming last time, but yeah, it's fine. So all the pricing calculations, etc., is there. If you want, if you have any questions around pricing, yeah, there we go. Okay. Are you all done, friends? Can I continue? Yes, sir. Okay, let's move on in that case. Do you, do you see S3 here? If you are not able to see S3, in all services, you'll see storage S3. Please click on that. Please click on S3, friends. And if you are running out of time, I would rather recommend you to uh, you to watch the recorded videos. Okay, and when you go to S three, let me delete everything, friends. I don't know why. Sometimes they charge me. Sometimes they pay. Sometimes I recommend. I, I, I request them to refund the money. But let me delete it. First, you need to empty. It will it will show you what you need to type in there. Then you can delete. Dir directly, you cannot delete. You just need to give the name of your bucket. Bucket is like folder that you create on your laptop or computer. And copy this permanently delete. Emptying is in progress. Yeah, sure. We have to wait for that. These are all a few things that I've created earlier, so I'm deleting it. Successfully deleted, see them? okay. You have to give the name of your folder, which is called as bucket here. 
and then I'll delete this as well. I'll empty first. Whatever you're creating, delete it. You won't be charged. Don't be under the assumption that, do you know what? I've uploaded only one file. Why will it exceed this space? After you run your model, it will occupy a lot of space. Onus is on you to delete whatever you have created, then you won't be charged. You can happily use a free tier. Okay. This is a screen that everyone should see and would see. You will have to just create on create bucket. I'll just give a name. ML on cloud, some name underscore 360. Then you select the region. Let it be, um, I'm, I'm selecting Ohio. You also choose that, select that. Don't change anything else. Just click on create bucket. Oh my God, I forgot. Underscore is not allowed. Hyphen is allowed. Just click. What happened? Ah, very good. ML on cloud. Everything should be in small. And hyphen is allowed. So do that. Okay, so once you create your bucket, click on that and you can upload the files of your choice. Whatever file you have, whatever data set, I clicked on this. Then I'm going to say add a file and I'll go here, I'll select um, back addition, I'll upload. Some data set, whatever data set you have, friends, you need not worry about having access to only this data set. Any data set that you have just uploaded. <clears throat> I'll exit this and go to S3. I'll once again click on this. Yep. There is a file, CSV. I already showed you, right? What do you want me to show? So, okay, fine. You can do it later on. You can. Do it later on, friends. You need not do parallelly along with me. Okay. A recorded video will be shared and you can do it. All right. Why auto ML is something that you guys haven't heard until now? Because autopilot is an option which was launched in late 2019, friends. And after that, it was all COVID, right? Maybe you didn't hear about that. And you need to upload columnar data, columns to S3 bucket. You upload your columnar data to be able to use AutoML functionality, which is called as autopilot. Because here you need to select your target attribute, target variable, output variable. Okay. We will be making use of GUI, graphical user interface of auto, of um, SageMaker Studio. But there is also another thing which is called as SDK, Software Development Kit. I mean, if someone is programming centric and if they want to write program, they can still do it. All you need to do is write only two lines of code. Two lines of code, that's it. Yes, absolutely. You can analyze the data, perform feature engineering, perform data uh, model tuning, etc. automatically, friends. What else? Yeah. So now what I would recommend you to do is click on services here. And once you click on services, you need to figure out on SageMaker. If you see the broad services, you would obviously observe something called as machine learning. And you have something related to vision for health to deal with your images. Uh, then you have for 
NLP purpose, all these things basically um, text track, transcribe, translate. Fraud detection models are there, forecasting models are there. Oh my God, bunch of things are there. At least now I recommend strongly that our people, participants, you need to, you know, very fast get up on these things. SageMaker. Ground truth for labeling. Automatically you can do it. You have a notebook instance directly you can run from here. You have training jobs, hyperparameter tuning, uh, you know, uh, inference means testing, okay, basically. Testing your models directly or using your endpoints for real time uh, prediction and batch transformation for batch, uh, you know, batch jobs. You can uh, perform, you know, processing the jobs. Job is nothing but some activity which has to be completed end to end with a defined object. Okay. Anyways, all that aside, you have something called as Amazon SageMaker Studio here. You need to click on that. Friends, after you create, it is your responsibility to delete. Okay, you cannot hold me responsible for not deleting. Okay, so I recommend you delete it. So let the default username, whatever is there, let it be there. Execution role drop down, select anything that appears. Okay, I'm just selecting something and click on submit. Okay, you guys can probably try out that while I. Go to S3 once. Let me go to I am identity access management. Hmm, very good. So let me delete all these. Why am I deleting all these things? Because I just want to show you. Okay. Don't worry about what I'm trying to do now. I'm sure you'll not be able to see a lot of these. So let first delete these. Watch the recorded video, friends, and okay, I recommend you to do it on your own. Yeah, hold on for one. Don't do it parallelly, okay? You can watch the recorded video and do it at a later point of time. So I'm deleting all the rules so that I might show you on what you need to do when it asks you to create a rule. Come on. Sir, the recorded videos will be in our LMS? It should, no. Um, we'll let you know somewhere. I'm yet to figure out where we need to place that. I'll let you know that. Okay, sir. Let me delete. Oh. What happened to this? Oh, these two. Uh, which one? I cannot delete, I think. This one should be able to delete. Let's see. Come on. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's see now what it says. Mm -hmm. 
Sage Medical Service. Usually I make one of our participants share the screen and do it. Let's see if it throws any errors. That's what I would do at the end of the day. Okay. Maybe those two rules. I'm not sure I need to again dig in now. So I'm going to SageMaker. And when I click on SageMaker Studio, it gives the default name and it gives an execution rule. It says create a new rule right now. So I'll click on create a new rule. I'll not make any change after save UT. I just click on create rule. That's it. Create it and click on submit. Uh, once again, select that and click on submit. Yeah. Now, what it does is, do you see here the status is showing us pending? The moment it shows started or in progress, something on those lines, I can start using this. I'll click on refresh once again. Let it come up. I'll wait for that to come up. And you guys also can try out if need. It would usually take two to three minutes, but it should come up. Yeah, maybe saying preparing stage because to do a configuring quick start. Refresh and see, friends, once if you guys are doing it in parallel with me. I don't recommend you, but if you are doing, you can just refresh and see. Taking a while still, let me refresh it. Mm -hmm. Pending, it's strange. Usually in uh, two to three minutes, it should be done.
taking a while, let me wait, can't help. Yeah. So you will have to wait until sprinters. And once the status changes to ready. Click on this, which says open studio. Sorry, friends. I thought of gulping something in between. Okay, so SageMaker Studio is getting enabled and it's creating Jupyter server application. I'll show you something interesting once it opens up. A lot of predefined models, etc., are available and you can readily use that. taking a while. Okay, so look at this friends, on one click you can export the solutions and models, look at that, SageMaker Jumpstart, detect malicious users and transactions, demand forecasting, all these things are democratized, I cannot tell more about you know you guys focusing on this, but as part of your AI training, you learn about that. Yeah. To crack interview, they'll ask you questions around what is a technique and so on and so forth. You should be aware of that. I'm not saying no. 
but if you are programming centric then you have to think twice look at the kind of automation which is happening every line of code do you need to write it on your own you will be obsolete in the market even in research you will become an obsolete person okay don't do that please focus on the techniques concepts and uh, are you not able to hear me friends audible right yeah and there was one person i need to uh, make a statement here i don't know his name he was hardly able to speak or frame a single line of sentence in english and he was saying that you know at least one two years of programming is needed supposedly to become a data scientist and is my voice breaking in between friends rehan is saying my voice is breaking can someone comment please no okay okay thank you thank you so much Uh, Rehan, that's a question I ask people. Is my voice breaking in between? They are all saying no. So I think you have to check your settings, Rehan. Please do that. Please check your settings. Okay. Yeah. So there is this guy. I I don't know what his credentials are. that but that person wasn't even able to frame a single line of english properly and he was saying that you know programming two years of knowledge is needed and all that don't get carried away by these kind of people and uh, i'm sure he is not a data scientist and uh, if he, he was a data scientist he would have probably projected that in a better way but don't get carried away by those kind of people who say that you need this much experience that much experience and all that yeah all right next when you click on this option here in this you will see something called as experiments and trials you need to select that already there are certain experiments that have run i don't know if i can delete that or um, what but i will certainly delete sage maker because i was unnecessarily charged last time so here what i will do is i'll just click on create experiment and i'll give a name here maybe 360 digit mg ml on cloud some name i'm giving some name i'll not worry about anything which is optional okay i'll not change anything and find s3 bucket yes you need to find there is a bucket called ml on cloud within that there is something called as bank additional file we have added remember and where do you want to store your output i'll store it in the same location don't worry giving any other name and here machine learning problem type you have binary classification if you have a two class problem two class classification problem if you have more than two class classification problem it is multi class classification or you have regression i'll just leave it as auto let the algorithm automatically choose based on my output variable do you want uh, to run a complete experiment yes or no your choice i want to run a complete experiment so you say yes i'll not change any of these settings and i'll click on create experiment it's creating let's build now ah, okay now it's saying that this is your data set in that you need to create your select your output variable output variable is y in my data set in your data set it could be something else you know what is an output variable i'm sensing that much amount of knowledge you should be having the moment i click on create experiment do you know what it's pre processing 
after pre processing it would create candidate definitions feature engineering and model tuning there in this specific data set you know the output variable is would someone select your marketing offer or not come on this is okay that's oracle crystal ball stuff that's okay i'll fix it later given these inputs would a person accept an a uh, marketing offer yes or no that's the output variable it's a two class problem automatically your sage maker applies the best algorithm you know what is the best algorithm when it comes to non deep learning algorithms xg boost all the kaggle competitions and all the other competitions which are one are one based on xg boost so pre processing is going on at this point of time it would run 250 trials it might take an hour that's fine but then it would run you can also stop the experiment if it takes more time on this section you can view your experiments all that is a possibility so i'll just click on the other experiments and i'll click on open in uh, trial component list this is how it will run all the uh, you know experiments my dear friends okay and do you know what let me select on is there an option to add another thing no not there fine no problem i'll i'll show you how it runs but then say this is your model the moment you select that there is an option called deploy model you can simply deploy a model if i say open in trial details it shows you a lot of things you can actually come up with a histogram a line chart okay you can select your whatever you want on your y axis say you want your validation accuracy give you what is the maximum accuracy that you are expecting okay then it's showing you all the metrics what is the objective metrics it's usually f1 ratio f1 ratio ranges from 0 to 1 1 being the highest validation error validation accuracy training error training accuracy what's the minimum and max then parameters if you look at these parameters one thing should be clear that it's basically your xg boost if you observe here it's xg boost which was run on cpu machine you are using only one instance instance means one computer one server which was this and you can also figure out what this means hey, what do you mean by this ml m4 large okay um it has 16 cpu 64 gb ram and it's going to cost you 1.13 dollars per hour so if you do not delete don't blame me okay delete whatever you do so it gives you 50 gb storage capacity this is the alpha value column size by tree eta value gamma lambda all these things friends one year back things were different i'm telling you again in every 3 months to 4 months things are changing and so are we now our main main emphasis will be on xg boost and ensemble techniques okay many things change right it cannot be the same we were delivering some trainings in 2020 start in 2021 if you are expecting us to stick to the same curriculum that's wrong many things change it's a journey we keep adding new things this also has come in as a new thing right okay anyways artifacts your training data validation data yeah your model gets stored in .tr.gz format 
this is the file that you give to your software developers they will deploy it in production if need be okay and then you have debugger you have model explainability that's not that needed here and trial mapping so on and so forth anyways now this is a model that we are running right this one i believe yeah. which phase is it in it's still in pre processing phase once it completes i'm going to uh, you know show you on what happens so it will it will do this candidate definitions generation feature engineering and model uh, tuning automatically and so you will see all these experiments in this way you can select whatever you want to select here if need and you can just deploy a model in production when you just click on deploy model it will deploy the model okay so this is how you build your model end to end you need not even worry did you write a single line of code no did it, did it do a lot of experiments yes how many uh, permutations combinations 250 permutations combinations are experimented with what what hyperparameters these are the hyperparameters right from you know um, here number of rounds until alpha value all these are the parameters it keeps changing different values and then it will figure out on what is the best value sir i have a doubt here yeah please yes sir this alpha value it is uh, this alpha parameter hyperparameter is only associated with this exe boost if it would have chosen any other uh, models like uh, by default it will choose exe boost depending on your output variable what is your output variable here It would a person why. accept the marketing offer or not? Market. Yes. Yeah. Then it will choose XG Boost only. If your question is, can I use some other machine learning algorithm? Sure, you can, but not in autopilot. This is autopilot, which is auto ML. All the options are pre-configured. But if you want to use some other algorithm, sure, it will be. Um, you need. You should not be using your autopilot option then. should be using sage maker there are many unsupervised learning techniques also manikrishna you need to explain clustering and all that you can perform sage maker is something in which you can apply any technique even if there is a technique which is not inbuilt you can bring in your own code and run it because here if you see for data science purpose you can use your base python you can use your mxnet you can use a pytorch you know all these are the tensor flow and all that i'm using a basic data science version here you have notebook console if you use your notebook it would open your um, jupiter you can make use of that cpu is being used here instance and just go ahead you can create your git account and then directly fetch the data from your github okay so let's see to what extent yeah look at this green thing green thing means this is done candidate definition generation is done feature engineering a is going on now after this is done model tuning will start once model tuning start here you will start seeing all the experiments like we have here all these experiments one after another you keep all these jobs based on your objective function and usually your objective function happens to be f2 function here it's binary logistic that's what it's saying but then f2 or oh, sorry not f2 what f2 f1 f1 ratio that's the accuracy it ranges from 0 to 1 one means it's the best model f1 strikes a right balance between precision and recall if you want to know the formula 
why precision and recall because you just need uh, you need not you should not be focusing on accuracy alone you should be focusing on how is it performing when it comes to the positive cases and negative cases it's a two class problem so what's happening with false positive and false negative only if your model does well with respect to both positive and negative cases only then you can consider your model as a good model accuracy might be very high but your model might be working very well only for positive cases not for negative cases so these kind of things should be taken care of another 4 minutes is what we have to go but let's see whether this feature engineering aspect gets completed and will the model move on to model tuning or not uh sir uh, excuse me hello yeah manipulation yeah so uh, so uh, here uh, i can understand that uh, in this uh, you are taking the supervised uh, learning data set for this data pre processing till model tuning so in this meantime it will generate all the uh, trials till the model tuning and it will uh, develop a model automatically in this uh, sage maker uh, studio correct so uh, afterwards the uh, deployment will be taken and uh, uh, automatically the the y result i mean the the y uh, output variable results will be thrown out i mean automatically in this uh, uh, studio for this uh, su supervised what do you mean deploying the model manikrishna i mean uh, till uh, our our scope is like as a data center as you told that till a model uh, development that will be that we will be uh, doing and this the model deployment will be done by software professionals you told right i mean that yes. uh, so that is also automated so what's your question here i mean i am asking like for this i mean in this scenario you are taking the supervised uh, learning data set for our uh, purpose actually correct okay for uh, for as as uh, parallelly for unsupervised learning data set as we want to proceed with the same steps or any other steps for this uh, for uploading the data set uh, separately or any options are there for uh, generating this so uh yeah same way. in a same way you have to do it okay hey burn stop here again again i repeat uh, my dear friend see autopilot is different autopilot is one of the components mani krishna within sage maker if your question is within sage maker do we have unsupervised learning techniques that's a question i think you have already asked me and i've already answered to that right that came i mean clustering or your dimension reduction bunch of things you can perform in your sage maker what are we uh, looking at what are we learning now mani krishna we are learning autopilot we are not doing we are not making use of sage maker core module we are looking at within sage maker we are looking at auto ml autopilot right so you can say like this it is uh, autopilot is a uh, subset of this sage maker studio oh, yes yes absolutely someone had a question yeah 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 sure so this is about uh, deployment can you go ahead and ask now ashok you have to be a little loud ashok i am able to hear everyone Yeah, this is about uh, deployment after training. After the model training, this is about deployment. Can I go ahead and ask about this now? You're talking. I am still not able to hear you, Ashok. So sorry. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm fine now. Can I'm you be a little? Now? Are you talking about something related to deployment? Yes, 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 yes. I am. I am. I am. Can I? Yeah, yeah please. Okay. So uh, after we do this uh, model training, so when we deploy, let's say uh, we want to do uh, our model to be trained every now and then. Let's say I have some data now uh, has to be trained uh, after 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 a few hours or after a few minutes. I have some some new data coming up. I have to get trained with. I have to make my model trained with that. Can we do that actually?
you can yeah sage maker has a has a capability but we are discussing only autopilot component where in automatically it runs strict model but if a question is if i get new data uh, a specific algorithm yes you can using sage maker you can who is automating all these things for us to automate all these things who can do it can i bring one java developer and say java developer automate exeboost or automate neural network can i do that for us just think for a change or do you need a data scientist who is expert at all these techniques to automate so you need a data scientist to automate at the end of the day you need to have those skills that's what i'm saying yeah. only then you can automate so let's wait for come up and then maybe next week we can uh, deploy the model actually by creating an endpoint we can deploy and once i deploy i'll show you how to do the prediction real time but again again that should not uh, take our discussion in a different direction but still let's give it a try come on yeah models have started i want to see those trials here at least if one completes it will start appearing here another 2 minutes we'll just wait let's see what happens sir i have a question here uh, so this ml on cloud uh, suppose we will be working going to uh, give this interviews so this entire uh, this back end details will be asked in interview question this what need to do in sage maker the process you it's did. written in json using json file it's written in java okay so when uh, it depends on what position you are applying for are you applying for a position called as aws architect architect wherein you are going to look into behind the scenes how the architecture works and all that then it's a different ball game but if you are applying for data science position obviously they will not want you to know all that because amazon will take care of that okay sir but techniques and concepts yep certainly what is algorithm that is by default used in autopilot when you have categorical data two categories which one friends exeboost yep done you create one interview question what are the various parameters of exeboost hyperparameters another question so that's a question should be uh thrown at you one more minute i'll wait friends and if it doesn't yeah it's coming up so what it does is it will give you the objective function f1 okay all these are the f1 values which range from 0 to 1 and after each experiment is run it will compare it will look at all these and it will figure out which is the best model and for that best model it's going to give you a star let me refresh it's not showing up but then yep and you select the best model which has a star and then click on deploy model which would open a different window altogether and here you want a real time deployment you give a name you select an instance so on and so forth save these predictions um select whatever you want do you want probabilities or what you want and then deploy the model that's it it will get deployed okay so end point would get created end point you need to delete otherwise it will keep charging can okay, emerald cloud we learn more but this is how you deploy your model in production 
I'll stop here. And next week when we connect, we will 